Hello there. In this video, I'm going to showcase my life-based Arctic Breath Cold Damage Over Time Triple Curse Occultist build. Later on in the video, I will go over the gym links, gearing, passive tree, ascendancy choices, as well as some leveling tips for the character. I want to begin by showing off a little bit how the character plays and some of the more crazy maps I've done on this character. This map is a tier 16 Elder Vault map ran with Divination, Pirandus, and Bestiary Scarabs with the Xena Abyss mod thrown on top. I will note that having ran a large quantity of these exact maps that it is not worth it to run Divination Scarabs in a Vault map despite in this clip I wound up getting three Hoarder cards. That is not normal for running this map. You do get a lot, but it does not pay for the Divination Scarabs. This is an Elder Phantasmagoria map, ran with Bestiary Scarabs. Um, here I run into three beasts on top of each other with Enemies Can't Die mob. Um, also it has Reliquary Scarabs, Harbinger Scarabs with an Abyss mod as well. And here you will see how quickly the Betrayal Syndicate members die. Tim Chains and MP will render them pretty useless. Now, lastly here, I will show you a Delve Depth 548, one of the nastier Delve mods that I've ran. It has more monster life and monster elemental resistances, which is about as tanky as monsters can get in the Delve for this character. Not to mention that monsters have increased critical strike chance and multiplier, onslaught, and extra damage as lightning. I will let you hear how it sounds as quite often in these delve encounters, you get flashbacks to microwave popcorn. So now to dive into the character, he's currently level 98, a cultist named It Chills Bones. What this character mainly does is cast Arctic Breath to apply chilling ground areas that applies the bone chill support to grant additional cold damage taken over time to your vortex and cold snap abilities. Looking at the gym links here, I have Arctic Breath linked with bone chill. Next most important would be lesser multiple projectiles and increase critical strikes. This allows Arctic Breath to more easily rock elemental overload. Next in importance would be faster casting and efficacy for some increased skill effect duration as well as boosting the damage just a little bit. The staff that I'm currently using is an Eclipse staff that was fossil crafted with the increased elemental damage modifier and also rolled tier one cast speed and cold damage over time multiplier. I was able to craft increased critical strike chance for spells and being an eclipse staff you get more critical strike chance giving me about 34 percent crit chance with arctic breath with no other crit chance modifiers on the tree or anything you can isolate the cold damage over time multiplier mod and then multi-mod it to create a staff similar to this because staffs like this are non-existent beyond this one that i have however I was able to level to around 93 and delve to over dev 400 using nothing but this Terran Shiver Elstrom Staff, and that's what I'll use to showcase a map at the end of this build discussion. My chest piece is a carcass shack, and the carcass shack serves as a dual filing setup for both Vortex and Vol Cold Snap. These are 
both linked with elemental focus, hypothermia, efficacy, and controlled destruction. These are all just more damage over time multipliers for cold damage, spell damage, cold damage over time, and whatnot. The only piece of gear here that is required is the Solstice Vigil Onyx Amulet, which allows Temp Chains to have 100% reduced mana reservation, so running a Blasphemy Temp Chains does not reduce your mana at all. Being an occultist, we can apply three curses to enemies at the same time. So I have Temp Chains and Enfeeble, both linked to Blasphemy, and Enhance for the increased quality gain, which greatly benefits Temp Chains and Enfeeble. My third curse is a Frostbite. Frostbite lowers enemies' cold resistance by 44%, and it is linked with faster casting and enlightened to lower the mana cost. It can cast relatively quickly and in a very large AoE. My other link here is Clarity. In my boots, I have Flame Dash linked with Arcane Surge, faster casting, and increased duration to push the Arcane Surge duration up from like 4 seconds to 7. As far as the gear goes, beyond the staff and chest, everything is pretty much just life and resist. I wanted as much life as possible on this character being life based and wanted to delve to at least 600. Boots and movement speed, life and resists. Belt is a lot of life and resists. Gloves, life and resists and some dexterity because my helmet is a lion pelt and that up the dexterity cost of this character from 111 to 150. On my helmet, instead of crafting a additional life like I have on my gloves and my boots, I have instead crafted 12% additional physical damage reduction while focused, giving me just a little extra buffer of physical damage, which is especially useful against map bosses and some of the more tricky betrayal encounters. Lastly, I have a ring here that has Aspect of the Crab skill, so with Aspect of the Crab, you periodically, it's actually relatively quickly, if you look up in the top left, each time this, you gain a crab barrier, you gain 2% physical damage reduction. All of these stacks drop when you are hit with physical damage, and then they start stacking up again. Before I was using Aspect of the Crab, I was using this ring here, just life and some damage. I was using Arctic Armor. Arctic Armor gives you 13% less physical damage taken when hit, which would be six and a half stacks of Aspect of the Crab, but it is only effective while you are stationary. So Aspect of the Crab is a more effective and more reliable way to deal with physical damage. And that is about the only physical damage mitigation I have on this character because none of my gear has armor on it besides a roll on my belt. As far as flasks go, I have a Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline for zoom zoom move speed. I have Basalt Flask for extra physical damage mitigation, immunity to burning, so that if I was burning, the energy shield that I have would regenerate quicker. I have a Quartz Flask because I have Acrobatics and Phase Acrobatics on this character. It gives me an additional 10% chance to dodge spells and attacks. Adds Phasing, which is very helpful to run through enemies, and I remove Curses with this. And then I have two Seething Divine Life Flasks, one which removes Poison and one which removes Bleeding. You can get more physical damage reduction by using a granite flask of iron skin however you lose the ability to have a immunity to burning or shock on your physical reduction flask so i'm using a basalt flask instead um, for delving you do not need a uh, curse immunity so i switch the quartz flask to one with shock immunity the only ways to further increase the damage output of this build would be to use some shaped gloves that have cold damage over time multiplier on them or to use a fossil crafted helmet with frigid fossils that would lower the cold res of nearby enemies by nine. For single target on this build, in-game bosses have 80% reduced curse effectiveness, so using frostbite on a boss would only lower their cold resistance by around 9%. However, if you use frost bomb, that is a guaranteed minus 25 to cold resistance, and you can also plug in hypothermia for LNP in the Arctic Breath setup, and single cast if you're only fighting one enemy. Slight damage increase there. As far as the Vortex and Cold Snap, Control Destruction is 10% less more damage than Conk Effect, but you lose a lot of area with it, and you still have decent area, but Control Destruction is close enough and damage wise and then you don't have to worry about any gem swaps for normal bossing. I was also able to 
double corrupt my carcass jack to have plus two to level of socketed duration gems which applies to vortex cold snap and efficacy increasing the damage greatly with that as well now we look at the passive tree for ascendancies you will start by getting void beacon to lower nearby enemies cold resistance by 20 and frigid wake giving you the cannot be chilled and cannot be frozen modifiers so you do not need any freeze immunity on flasks and additional 20 percent cold damage over time multiplier for your merciless lab you will get profane bloom allowing you to apply your curses to hexproof enemies which is great right as you get to mapping because that also the first time you will really encounter a lot of hexproof enemies you will also explode 25 percent of the monsters you kill that have curses on them which is all of them and they will deal one quarter of their life as chaos damage you can pretty much explode entire packs just from profane bloom for your final ascendancy point you'll get malediction so you get your third curse from this increased curse effect and enemies with malediction deal 10 percent reduced damage and take 10 percent increased damage the last modifier here when you kill an enemy for each curse that on that enemy gain eight percent of non-chaos damage is extra chaos for four seconds only applies to the initial hit and does not apply to the cold damage over time so all of the non-chaos is extra chaos damage that you can roll on staves and whatnot with the new crafting mods does not really help this build for leveling you will start off with the witch running with freeze pulse and frost bomb up to level 12 when you can get to cold snap and you will get some increased area and from that point, you'll probably push over towards Growth and Decay for some damage over time. And if you need more spell damage at that point, you can get Cold Hearted Calculation and Elemental Focus here for some just increased damage before you push down to Acrobatics and Phase Acrobatics. Along the way, you can get Fingers of Frost, which gives you some increased Cold Damage and Cold Damage Over Time Multiplier. And this should carry you through Act 5, probably Act 5, Act 6 pretty easily. There's e easy access to more life if you need it from there. After that, you would push up towards getting your second curse from Whispers of Doom and also getting Breath of Rhyme to get the cold damage over time multiplier along the way. You don't necessarily need to go to the right side as cold penetration does not affect cold damage over time. So we aren't using a cold pen gem. We aren't going out of our way for any additional cold penetration because it does not affect the damage over time. However, there is a decent amount of cold damage here if you do want to pick it up earlier on. Finally, as you're getting closer to mapping, you, you might want to spec into some increased critical strike chance through Doomcast and Annihilation so that you can easily proc Elemental Overload and you would work your way down towards the Scion Life Wheel and also get Skittering Runes to increase your curse effectiveness. At that point, the only thing you have left to sock it in is Jewels. Jewels you are looking for for this character have increased life and cold damage over time multiplier. Anything else beyond that is bonus. Those are the two important ones. You can get area damage, cold damage, spell damage, cast speed with a staff, spell damage with a staff, or if you are getting more damage on your gear, you can also get some resistances on your Jewels as well if you would like but most of my jewels just are life and as much damage as possible. Now I have specced all my gear in to the Terran Shiver and the Carcass Jack so I can show you a map. Let me dump my stash here. I also should mention that while you're leveling, you can use the Witchfire Brew Flask for a third curse, or you have Solstice Vigil. Solstice Vigil is a great benefit for Tim Chains, but you will have to reserve it before you're able to get the Solstice Vigil. Um, so the Witchfire Brew Flask gives you a level 21 to spare, which causes cursed enemies to take 35% increased damage from damage over time effects, boosting your damage by a bit, not as much as the benefit Frostbite gives you. So using the Terran Shiver setup, Carcass Jack without plus two, I'm going to run this Elder Toxic Sewer map with a Gilded Bestiary Scarab, Gilded Cartography Scarab, and Gilded Harbinger Scarab. And we can add in more Harbingers just because. This build is really good at dealing with Harbingers. The one major downside of this build is Lightning Mirage Nemesis mod. That Nemesis mod is really hard to see on this character because you can kind of see that my character just glows when you have your quartz flask up. And the 
and phasing. So when the lightning mirages would spawn on top of you, it's it's really difficult to see at times. But you can you can see how the build works. You cast the Arctic Breath, Flame Dash in, make sure you're getting your Arcane Surge activated. And just keep spamming abilities down until everything dies. Most of what I've done on this character has been farming 216 maps for beasts. Uh, I'm not too into farming maps for divination cards because you're tied into running the same map over and over and over. Uh, however, when you're farming beasts, you can do whatever map you want to. And this character is really effective at dealing with lots of chaotic situations. Now, since I'm using a Terran Shiver, I'm not using my normal staff. It is a little bit harder to proc Elemental Overload because I'm not specced into the, the crit chance nodes. But the additional damage that it gives you is very beneficial. Now, here we go for the boss. one of those bosses where the chaos resistance that I have on all of my gear really comes into effect as it leaves chaos damage on the ground after it dies. Another really good part of this build is that it is very good at dealing with syndicate encounters. pretty much face tank it because temp chains and enfeeble affect the syndicate members a little more than other normal bosses it seems so they pretty much get stuck in a standstill and you can just easily take them down and having the the focus skill that you can use for an additional bit of physical damage reduction makes it even easier to deal with some of the more heavy hitting physical monsters physical betrayal mobs like leo and janus right there is an excellent use like demonstration of why the quartz flask and phasing is so useful because if I did not have that there, those volatile balls would have certainly destroyed this character. When you are using Enfeeble as a lot of your damage mitigation, it only affects the damage of monsters themselves. The monsters can hit you for the massive amount of reduced damage that is given by Enfeeble, but those after damage effects like the volatile and lightning mirage are not monsters so that all of that damage mitigation that you have is rendered pretty useless so the biggest downsides with this character is you have to dodge the volatiles consistently and you have to really watch out for lightning mirage but beyond that this character is very powerful very strong through end game and I have not done much bossing on this character. I, I have yet to complete an Uber Elder on this character. I haven't even attempted it. If you would like to see me run it through some boss trials, uh, leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed the content, like. And if you would like to see more, hit me with a subscribe. And I hope you have a nice day.